today we are going to tackle the issue of the genetics of obesity. And I structured this presentation around seven key questions and answers around this issue. Now, before we embark in studying this topic, I would appreciate it very much if you took a few moments and in the comment section, you share with me your thoughts and feelings about this issue of the genetics of obesity. And I'll be doing the same at the end of this video, so make sure to watch till the end. First question is, how do we know if obesity is genetic and how much does genetics contribute to obesity? One of the landmark studies that shed light on this issue was a study on twins. The researchers took 12 pairs of twins and they overfed them a thousand calories per day, six days a week for a total of 100 days. Now, if genetics or other facts that would be relevant, you would expect all these participants to have gained about the same amount of pounds, which would be around 24 pounds or 11 kilograms. But what actually happened in real life is that the range of weight gain was between about four kilos and 13 plus kilograms. Within twin pairs, the amount of weight gain was very similar. And that was one of the very first strong indicators that genetics play a very important role in determining how much weight we gain or we don't when we overeat. Since then, many other studies have contributed to this. More recently, there have been a lot of genome-wide studies that identified at least 120 specific sites in our DNA associated with, hearty, with higher BMI, higher weight, higher body fat composition. And experts estimate there are many more thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands such locations. Each one of those having a minimal effect on weight or body composition. But together, the more of those we have, the higher the genetic risk for obesity is. As far as how much of the total obesity out there in the general population is driven by these genetic factors, estimates range between 40 and 70 percent, which is quite significant if you think about it. Are there specific genes that play an important part in weight gain and obesity? And the answer is yes. There are a number of specific genes. The first one that was discovered was the leptin gene in the 90s. And this gene codes for the hormone leptin, which is the satiety hormone. One of the most commonly used in studies is the so-called FTO gene, the fat mass and obesity associated gene. There is also the POMC gene, the pro-opio melanocortin gene, and, and the receptor to these hormones that this gene codes for, the MC4R receptor gene. There's the insulin induced gene too, as well as the ADIPO-Q, the gene for adiponectin which is also important. And all of these genes are highly correlated with BMI, with body weight, with body composition, with fat storage, and so forth. But I think the important thing to recognize and understand here is that while there are some individual genes that have a big impact on weight, like if somebody has a homozygous mutation in the leptin gene, those people will have morbid obesity early in life. Fortunately, those, this single gene mutations or problems are extremely rare in the population. So the vast majority of obesity that we see in the general population is not driven by single gene, it's not, mon it's not monogenic, it's polygenic, meaning there are hundreds, possibly thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of mutations of loci in our DNA together. And the more of those we have, they act synergistically to increase the risk and to account for this propensity for obesity that we do see in the general population. The next question would be whether there are specific genetic tests we could do to find out if we are at an increased risk for obesity, preferably early in life. And the, the answer is yes, we can test for each of those individual genes that I mentioned. You could also look for all these uh, genome-wide associations and calculate the genetic score for somebody. However, the important thing is that so far these tests are not available in a general lab. Like if I want to order these tests at my local clinic lab for my patients, I cannot do that. You could get creative and go to places like 23andMe or Ancestry or other things like that and do your DNA profile 
and some of them would allow you to do custom searches for all these variants but you kind of have to know what you are doing and what you are looking for and more importantly how to interpret those results and so the research is still early in this area and I can see a day in the next decade where people could get tested and get a personalized recommendation in terms of their genetic risk for obesity and even what type of lifestyle interventions would work better for their genetic profile. We are not there yet though. Related to this is another question that's often asked and that is can gene editing technology ameliorate or improve genetic risk in people who have a high risk genetically speaking for obesity maybe in the future but certainly not at this present time there are technologies that allow for genetic editing but they are in their infancy and the ethic and cost implications are significant and those are hurdles that will need to be solved and figured out before something like this could be available on a large scale epigenetics these are changes that happen not to the genetic code itself but they have to do with DNA methylation attachment of moieties to the actual DNA molecule or histone modification modification of the proteins around the DNA molecule and other things like that so these epigenetic changes interestingly enough they can be transmitted at least to some extent from one generation to another and they can sometimes capture and transmit cultural issues that are pro-obesity are there means by which I can decrease this risk and even though at first sight when we talk about genetics and heredity uh, barring genetic editing we are tempted to think that we can do really anything about it the reality is and studies show that there is actually a lot we can do to modify this risk the way to think about genetic propensity and the comparison that's uh, quite plastic in this respect is that genetics load the gun but it's lifestyle that pulls the trigger so you may come in life with a loaded gun but unless you practice the lifestyle that leads you to obesity that gun may never trigger and that's the secret that's the, the key way to look at this and indeed we have studies showing that this is the case some of the most promising and amazing studies obviously these require large numbers of people or follow over time to to be relevant and in the UK we have almost half a million people that have volunteered their DNA through what is called the UK Biobank study and already we have several research articles showing that healthy lifestyle practices decrease genetic risk for obesity one of the first that came out also in the UK but from the epic Norfolk prospective population 20,000 men and women what they showed was that regular physical activity decreases the genetic predisposition to obesity by 40 percent think about that you can almost cut your risk in half even if you were dealt the wrong cards genetically speaking for obesity by walking regularly half an hour a day five days a week I mean how cool is that right a low fat low saturated fat and low calorie diet have been shown to decrease the risk significantly but it's not diet and exercise alone sleep adequate sleep has also been shown to decrease the genetic risk for obesity in the UK biobank population and I expect these findings to continue to accumulate and confirm what we already know and that is if you put thought planning and effort in putting together a exercise program an eating plan if you take care of your sleep and lifestyle in general good things will come from that and these things will affect your genetic risk even your epigenetic factors in a positive way and the converse is also true so to summarize genetics play an important part up to 70 percent of the variance in weight and BMI is accounted for by genetic factors or heavily influenced by genetic factors genetics is like a loaded gun however which gives us the opportunity to use healthy lifestyle habits in terms of exercise diet sleep balance to prevent this genetic gun from discharging and wreaking havoc in our lives one important aspect here about the genetics of obesity and what helped me the most was to understand that for most people with obesity is not lack of moral fiber is not bad choices necessarily that accounts for that problem 
And on the other side of the things, people who seem to be fine no matter what they do or eat are by no means any paragon of virtue. They are just luckier, genetically speaking, in that respect. Well, thank you for hanging with me to the end of this video. I appreciate if you subscribe and activate the uh, notification bell. And if you're wondering what should I watch next, you don't have to struggle with that because I have a recommendation just for you. The five reasons why it's difficult to lose weight.